We obviously need a database to store our user information when they register and we update their details and stuff like that. So we need to now create the users database table. So it doesn't matter what you're using to manage your database. Uh, I'm using SQL Pro, but you can use something like PHP MyAdmin if you feel more comfortable with that or if you uh, have some other software you want to use, that's fine. So I have a database called Site. Remember, we set that in the configuration just here, uh, but you can obviously call it whatever you want as long as it matches up to your configuration. So let's get creating this users table then. So I'm going to create a new table called users. Now SQL Pro creates the ID field for me, but I'm going to run along what this involves just in case your software doesn't. So we have a field called ID. We have a type of int and a length of 11, which you can reduce if you want. 11 is quite long for this purpose, but again, tidy up to you. This is unsigned, so it's greater than zero. It's not a negative number and it's a primary key of the table. And we also have an auto increment on it, which is really important. All that means is when we create a new record, the ID of each record will increase and therefore it will give each user a unique ID. So the other fields that we need to create then, let's go through them now. We have a username, which is a varchar. And it's up to you which length you choose. When you validate, you're going to want to make sure that the username isn't greater than a certain amount. But for this purpose, I'm going to choose 20. So this is a default of null. Um, we aren't allowing null on this, but really this doesn't matter too much because everything's going to be controlled within our application. But it's entirely up to you whether you choose to allow null. We shouldn't allow null though, because the username should always be uh, filled. We have a first name, which is also a varchar, and we can set this to say 50. And we are going to allow null on this because when we create this user, first of all, they're not going to have a first name unless you're registering them with a first name. And we also have a last name as well, which is exactly the same. We'll set this to 50 as well and allow null on that. So the password then is going to be a varchar. It's going to be 255 because we'll be generating a hash uh, with the PHP password hashing API. And we don't want to allow null on this either because that's required. Now we have active, which is going to be a Boolean, which basically translates to a tiny integer with a length of one. And we are not going to allow null on this. We also have an active hash. Now the active hash is a varchar of 255. And we are going to allow null on this because we are going to be nulling it once the user has activated their account. We don't want them to activate their account twice. So uh, this is just going to be the hash that's sent to them by email. Well, not the actual hash. Uh, we're going to send an identifier to them, which will be hashed in the database for security. And then uh, they can go ahead and activate their account and that will be removed. We also have a recover hash as well. That's going to be a var chart of 255. And again, we're going to allow null. All this is going to be is the hashed version of the identifier that we send to them when they want to recover their password. So now we have our remember identifier. That's going to be a var char of 255. And basically the remember identifier is the identifier that we give to a user when they select remember me. So we generate this for them. But we also have a remember token. And this just enforces the security of when they want to be remembered. Because remember, when we remember me, or when we remember a user, we're essentially setting a cookie which could be then tr uh, attempted to brute force and, and then someone would be logged into someone else's account. So we have two layers of security here. Now we also have a created at, which is a timestamp, and we have an updated at, which is a timestamp. So created at uh, isn't going to be null because when we uh, click, when we register them, we're going to automatically add a created at date. So we now have all of the fields that we need. The reason that we have created at and updated at is because we're going to be using eloquent models within our database package that we pulled down earlier. And this would basically just, uh, when you create a new user, it's going to update the created at date and time. And when we update anything, it will update the updated at as well. So that is all of the fields that we need inside of our table. Feel free to change this around if you uh, understand database design enough to make good informed decisions on updating this. But at the moment, we just have all of the fields that we need. 
with the appropriate types and the appropriate lengths here. So now that we've got our database tables created, we want to actually add database support. And then we'll look at actually uh, later on how we hook this into our application. 